What's up and welcome to my final summary review where we talk about everything I discovered in my four hour live stream talking about the Omen 14. This is going to be an in-depth review of everything you need to know about the, the laptops, some from software to speakers, to display, to gaming performance. Uh, and we're gonna also compare against some other competitors out there and look at some top deal options. Let's talk about value comparison against the competition. This cost me $17.99, $200 off when I bought it from Best Buy. I bought it with my own money. In terms of value comparisons against the competition, now I gotta give a huge shout out and thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this review of the HP Omen 14. Now we're doing the review exactly the same as I always do. For the sponsorship, we're gonna go over some of the top deals on Best Buy's website. And I can be completely honest with you about the deals as well as this laptop that is also sold by Best Buy. Now it turns out I can't recommend buying the HP Omen 14 at least at the current price of $19.99, perhaps if it goes on a big sale to like around 14. $19.99 or something like that. But I can recommend some other great deals currently on Best Buy site. Let's take a look. You can see they have a top deal section on their website. You can click this button right here to take you there. Shows you what's currently on sale. And they regularly cycle the gaming laptops in and out. Gigabyte Aorus 7 or Aorus 17.3 inch. This is a 360 hertz 17 inch gaming laptop, RTX 4060 with an Intel i5-12500H. Now this is enough to play a lot of esports games at over 250 to 360 FPS. You play games like Counter-Strike, Valorant, Fortnite, at least 200 plus FPS in those games, depending on what settings you run the games at. It's phenomenal value for the money. One of the best esports gaming laptops that you can get in the more uh, budget friendly price point. 1049, I think is great value. Legion Slim 5, it's a 14.5 inch OLED 120 Hertz with a Ryzen 7 7840HS, 16 gigs of RAM and an RTX 4060 rounds out this portable 14 inch laptop from Lenovo. Definitely one of the laptops that I think uh, is worth considering if you're after something very portable and uh, still moderately powerful with an OLED display. Next up, we have the Acer Predator Helios 18, the only 18 inch laptop in this top deal segment. Typically speaking, 18 inch laptops are gonna be much more expensive than the 16 or 17 inch laptops because they're the largest form factor and they cost the most to produce. Now, this laptop's normally $16.99, currently on sale for $13.79. I think it's a pretty good deal. We're looking at a full HD plus, so 16 by 10, 19, 20 by 12, 1200 resolution, not the super high resolution of a QHD or 4K display, but this is a more budget friendly 18 inch laptop, so it's to be expected. 165 hertz refresh rate, Intel i7-13700HX processor, so a very good CPU. GeForce RTX 4060, 16 gigs of DDR5, and a one terabyte SSD rounds out this overall more budget friendly 18 inch laptop. Definitely one worth considering if you're after an 18 inch laptop on a budget. Now. We have the new 2024 Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 with an OLED 120 Hertz Ryzen 9 8945 HS, 16 gigs of LPDDR5 memory and an RTX 4060 with a one terabyte SSD, $150 off, definitely lands this premium CNC aluminum chassis laptop in the top deals for this video 100%. It's a fantastic machine and great value at $14.49. And last but not least, we have the 2023 Zephyrus G14 with the RTX 4080. So with this laptop, you're gonna be stepping up to big boy performance. You're gonna be able to play QHD games on ultra settings with more VRAM. The display is not gonna be as bright and poppy as the OLED display is, but it's QHD resolution. So it's actually a little bit lower resolution and it's still a 500 nits display. So a very nice display on here. Good CPU, good GPU, and extremely portable. And for an RTX 4080, this is the only 14 inch laptop that goes up to the RTX 4080 and 4090. If I were to go to a 14 inch laptop, I would definitely go for an RTX 4080 or 4090 G14 2023, if it was my money. So that's the top deals from Best Buy. Let's get back to the review. The main issue with this laptop is that it has a lower power GPU 
total TDP. That's probably the biggest con compared to the competitors like the 2023 and 2024 Zephyrus G14, the Legion Slim 5i, uh, are probably the two primary competitors to this in the 14-inch category, as well as, I suppose, the Razer Blade 14, which is also higher power compared to the Omen 14 that I have here. So the base on this GPU is only 45 watts, which means that when the CPU is being slammed, you're gonna get around 45 to 50 watts of GPU performance, but utilizing the GPU boost mode in the software, the HP Omen Gaming Hub, you can actually boost it by 15 additional watts to where when the CPU is not under maximum load, you can get up to 65 watts of power to the RTX 4070. Now, the issue with this laptop only getting to that high of wattage is primarily, I think, because we have USB-C power brick for this laptop and we that limits your wattage to only about 140 watts total and even less than that technically because USB-C is actually less power efficient when it delivers the wattage through the port compared to additional power adapter. So, so yeah, even if you were to flash this with a higher VBIOS to say a 75, 90 watt VBIOS, maybe the VRMs can handle it. Maybe the motherboard can handle it. Maybe the cooling can handle it, but the USB-C power adapter probably could not handle the additional 20 to 40 watts of power throughput, it would just not be able to supply enough juice to the GPU CPU without draining the onboard battery. So that's probably why they limited the GPU down so severely. Uh, and it makes me just wish they had just used a power adapter. Now, that, that that's just, from a design perspective, I, I would have preferred a power adapter because that would also make sure that we have two USB-Cs at all times with this laptop. But when you, when you use one of the USB-Cs on the laptop for the power plug, it also takes one of those away. So realistically, ports, when this, is, when this thing is plugged in, has one USB-C. If you're using the default USB-C power plug, that leaves you with one Thunderbolt 4, two USB-As, and a headphone port. It's not much. There's very minimal ports on this laptop. And I think a lot of people are gonna be lacking ports pretty often. So I would say if you get this laptop, get a USB-C or Thunderbolt 4 dock that you can take with you or keep on your desk whenever, wherever you plug the laptop in so that you can have your peripherals and all of that plugged in through there. And then you just use occasional things you need to plug in and out or plugging in stuff on the go with the USBs. Um, most other 14 inch laptops do have better ports than this. They have usually a micro SD card slot or uh, maybe one more USB uh, or at least a power adapter port so that it doesn't take up one of the USB-C ports when you plug it in. So the BIOS, we couldn't even get into the BIOS. I don't know if that's just my problem, but we, when you go into the traditional F2 or uh, delete key button, it takes you into a, a UEFI like which is the same type of BIOS interface, but it's like a system troubleshooting mode. Uh, honestly, there's probably no BIOS settings that are worth changing on this laptop anyway. Uh, just cause there's, you know, there's soldered RAM and you have one SSD that you probably, you probably won't upgrade it. Maybe you'll upgrade it, but that'd be the, maybe the only thing that you need to go into the BIOS for maybe if it's not picking up the SSD and you need to change how it's detecting the SSD or something. Um, quality control of the laptop. Let's talk rigidity. So all metal chassis, top deck lid, metal, bottom metal, main downside to the bottom being metal, it'll transmit heat. And the, the wrist rests are also metal, so that will also transmit heat to you. Windows, hello, log me in, please. There we go, we're back in. Um, so overall wrist rest when gaming got warm, and I would say that the flex on this machine is not great. Like, especially for an all metal build, I would expect it to be more rigid. They should have added probably additional supports between the bottom and top of the chassis, especially in the middle and by the touchpad here. Uh, Cause there's just a lot of flex when you push down. I mean, even without it being on a desk, I can still make it flex pretty good without too much pressure. It will feel a little bit flimsy in your, your hand. Like if you type normally, not too much flex, but I mean, I would say I would notice it every now and then, maybe when I'm repositioning my hands or something. It just doesn't feel as premium for a $2,000 retail price notebook. I would want it to be more rigid. Is That's the main thing I'm trying to say. Screen wobble, also maybe a little bit more wobbly than I would ideally like. 
But I like when it, when it's in place, it moves around and it feels very stable. You can see that I'm moving it around. It stays, it stays there, right? The hinge is strong, um, but moving it around does make it wobble a bit. So um, when you're using it in your lap, I think it would be an excellent laptop to use in your lap for general computing, office work, student work. That'll all be excellent. The main issue is gaming with it in your lap. It's going to get spicy temps, okay? This is going to get warm in your lap. There's not much surface area under here to dissipate the heat without it touching you. So, and then if you, it's in your lap, it'll also block the airflow. It'll probably make it worse in terms of temps overall. This laptop came with McAfee, two versions of McAfee. It had uh, the, the HP Omen Booster, which has constant pop-ups. Uh, I noticed that it wasn't doing that as much today when we were going in and out of games. I... This morning, when I was loading in and out of games, every time I'd load a game, it would pop up saying, you have this much VRAM, and then it would have another pop up saying, we're optimizing, the, boosting the game. I don't know, maybe I disabled it in the settings without realizing it, I don't know. But it, the pop ups on this laptop are a lot and severe, so be ready to remove some software like McAfee and disable additional pop ups that occur. I would say that uh, the webcam quality is good. I would give it like an eight out of 10 in terms of color, detail, um, and usability. Windows Hello was also good in my experience, logs me in consistently without issue. The laptop keyboard, this is one of my pet peeves about HP Omen's marketing around the Omen 14. They had per key RGB backlighting in all of their marketing materials. And it looks freaking awesome. Uh, the rainbow wave across all the keys, like this is a very noticeable RGB keyboard. And I would expect per key RGB implementation at this $2,000 price tag. But we only have four zone RGB, even though it's a $2,000 laptop. I feel like that is not good. And HP should really get the, the per key RGB going as soon as possible. I saw a comment in the live stream that said that it'll be coming at a later time. Now, the actual four zone lighting does look pretty good. Like it's noticeable. It's just, you know, you can see it. It doesn't blend well. Like a lot of four zone lighting has blending zones where like between the two different uh, areas here, like it actually blends more smoothly to make it a more like streamlined wave appearance. And this is more segmented. I don't really love that. The actual keyboard feel though is Good. It's got large keys with good spacing. It feels a lot like, I guess, my desktop keyboard that I have behind me, uh, but it's only a 14 inch chassis, which is pretty awesome, okay? Uh, the actual keyboard feel is very soft. A lot of people are gonna like the keyboard on this laptop for typing, and some people are probably gonna hate it. It's just gonna really come down to individual preference. I think in terms of looks, uh, when you turn off the light, this looks very bland. It doesn't look like a high-end premium gaming laptop. Um, and it doesn't look like a high-end premium Ultrabook either when the lights are off. When the lights are on, I think it looks like a decent gaming laptop. If it was perky RGB, it would look like an awesome gaming laptop. All right, so that's where I'm just like, $2,000, it could definitely look a lot better. Uh, the mouse pad, glass trackpad, as best I can tell, glides smoothly, large, feels really, really good. Um, I don't think it's plastic, but it's it's smooth, it feels good, it clicks well. The main issue is the chassis flex. If you're a heavy clicker, you'll notice the chassis flex every time you go to click. So notice, I'm just, just pointing that out. The display, 402 nits brightness, very good. It's an OLED. 2,880 by 1,800 resolution. So very high resolution for a 14 inch chassis, honestly overkill resolution, quite frankly. And uh, the display's backlight is, is, is great. It's extremely high contrast, very dark blacks. We had 400,000 to one contrast ratio, which might be the highest I think we've ever tested. It's extremely high. And the color gamut was also excellent. With the Spider 5 Elite, we tested 93% when translated to normal color gamut. It's 100% DCI-P3 color gamut, 100% sRGB, above 100% Adobe RGB as well. Very, very good display. We have a glossy display here, and it's a glass 
display edge to edge with this nice rim around it. I really like that. I kind of wish it was a touch enabled display, kind of. I mean, gaming laptops don't really need touch enabled, but it'd be a cool feature if they had that as an option because it is a glass edge to edge. So I like that premium feel and look. The laptop control software just has a lot of extra stuff in it. You can control games, you can boost stuff, and it's kind of intrusive in that sense. Lots of pop-ups when you're opening and using it. It just feels, I guess, a little bit overdone in terms of all of the features they're trying to jam in there. And in that sense, it's not quite as user-friendly. But once you figure it out, it's actually really effective and fairly lightweight. Uh, to use, no, no problems in terms of usability. You got some custom fan modes in there. You can do a custom fan profile. You've got manual fan and max fan, auto fans with each individual uh, fan profile. So balance and performance, which are the two. And then you have eco mode. Eco mode was very interesting because it dropped us down to 24 Hertz refresh rate on the display. And then you also can switch the graphics mode into integrated graphics only mode. And if you combine those two things together, I'm imagining some really good battery life with this laptop for things like taking notes in college or in business, doing basic office, office tasks. You could probably get really good battery life. Only 75 watt hours on the battery though, not a huge battery, but still very good overall battery and potential battery optimization for those of you on the go that don't need to do much other than like Excel, Word, Office stuff, really basic stuff um, on the go. And plus, I mean, it's a small power adapter because it's USB-C. So that's also gonna help the portability factor. So, I mean, I would not be surprised if you could get over 10 hours of battery life in that eco mode with integrated graphics enabled only. The speakers on this machine are, I think, above average. You got good bass, mids, and highs. Uh, the clarity on, I think, the bass, mids, and highs could all be better, especially the mids and highs. The bass is quite noticeable. It's very thumpy. It definitely has a subwoofery type of feel to it. Like I said, the main issue is the clarity overall, though, especially when you got the bass, mids, and highs all firing at once. It's kind of like that's where things get a little bit more muddled. When it's just the bass, just the mids, and just the highs, like playing all at once, like it tends to sound a lot better. In actual games... I feel like the overall volume could be better as well because it just wasn't quite as immersive having the volume be as low as it was. Almost like a booster could help push out additional decibels and make it a better audio experience. Fan noise testing. We had 53 decibels at max fans, which is actually pretty quiet for a max fan. It's kind of a gentle, fairly strong whoosh, but not overwhelming. 49 decibels in performance auto fans, which was the same performance as max fans, just at slightly higher temps. And that was 49 decibels, which is, that's obviously very good. In balanced mode, it was like 48 decibels, so not much difference, and it was significantly less performance, not worth using balanced mode in my opinion. Eco mode, very quiet, 43 decibels, but also basically almost no performance, completely neutered the laptop in terms of performance. Frame capping, the whole, the whole laptop and the target FPS of the GPU to 24 FPS. This is not a good gaming experience unless it's a super slow strategy game or something. I don't know. It's kind of hard to even move the mouse at 24 FPS. So in general, I probably wouldn't use the eco mode at 24 FPS. I'd at least do 30 or maybe 60. Unless I was just taking notes, then yeah, I would use maybe 24. That'd be fine. And I really needed to maximize my battery life. In terms of actual thermals, the main issue with thermals was before we switched to prioritizing GPU performance more. You know, there's a setting in the HP hub that is like the advanced setting that allows you to smart boost the GPU by 15 watts. That transitioned the GPU watts to prioritize the GPU more than the CPU. Without that setting enabled, the CPU was ramping to 100 degrees Celsius way too often in my opinion and way too easily. Um, so that could cause Thermal throttling, which will then reduce performance and abnormally push the CPU too high anyway. So we need to prioritize the GPU anyway. So I highly recommend going into the HP Omen Gaming Hub, switching on the Smart Boost inside of the advanced settings. Because that will that will give you like probably 15 to 20% more FPS across the board inside of games. Apex Legends was an excellent experience, close to 120 FPS at the full resolution on low settings. 
uh, actually well above 120 FPS most of the time when we were actually playing in a match, but in the firing range was just under 120. Helldivers 2, like 50 FPS, but very fluid, very good 1% lows, still was very playable and a good experience. Dragon's Dogma 2 was very bad overall experience, only like 20 for our 1% lows, 40 for our average, but it went down into the 30s often. Yikes, you're gonna need to turn settings down in Dragon's Dogma 2, but I would, I'm guessing, I mean, we did turn off ray tracing, we did lower DLSS, you could probably get it up above 60 FPS on lower, low to medium settings. But um, yeah, Dragon's Dogma 2, not very optimized, and this laptop not able to power through it to hit high FPS numbers in Dragon's Dogma 2. Alluvium. Also, VRAM limitations in Alluvium causing a lot of stutters. Also, game optimization needs to be done. On medium settings, we're getting over 100 FPS in Overworld. Very good experience, I think, once the game is more optimized. God of War, 45 FPS, 30 for a 1% low. Very playable, no frame gen in there at 45 FPS. But ideally, God of War, I would go for like 90 FPS if I can. So original settings on probably DLSS on balance would get us close to 90. Very good gaming experience when it's tweaked, but you're gonna have to do your tweaking. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, another example where you're going to have to do tweaking to get good FPS because we only had 40 FPS with ray tracing on Ultra. So turning off ray tracing, putting DLSS down to balance, I think we got 75 or so FPS. Makes it much more playable, but that's with frame gen, and you really want to get over 90, I think, in that game with frame gen. So you're going to have to go down to, I don't know, medium settings or DLSS even down to performance, which then it's starting to look a little bit janky visually, I think. Um, but not too bad because it's such a high resolution display. Dead Space, very good gaming experience overall, but it's like, I think we got around 50, little in the, the low to mid 50s for our average. It's playable, but it's a shooter. And so I really prefer to have higher FPS in shooters, especially when things are trying to kill me in the dark. It's very scary. And so, yeah, Dead Space, I'd probably want 75 to 90 in that range. And you're gonna have to turn settings down or DLSS down to boost the FPS in this laptop to get there. Baldur's Gate 3, absolutely perfect gaming experience, 120 FPS approximately. Um, I think I'm down to 110 by the end of the benchmark, but very good ray tracing or Ultra settings with DLSS on quality at the full 2880 by 1800 uh, for the resolution. Witcher 3, 40s FPS with ray tracing on ultra, too low for frame generation to have a good experience. So you're really looking at um, having to turn ray tracing off, then you get into the 70s. If you go down to even lower settings, you could boost above 90 FPS and have a really good experience in the Witcher 3 but it's gonna take a lot of tweaking to get this lower powered RTX 4070 to get the playable frames. But this laptop is portable. It's very portable and it feels pretty premium. It's got a lot of the premium features like Windows Hello, OLED, 120 Hertz display, high resolution, bright RGB keyboard, even though I wish it was per key RGB. It's, it's a good laptop. It's just priced too high at 2000 for me to be able to recommend it. At 1800, it's like a maybe, but there's competitors that are definitely better for your money, especially if this is full priced. I wouldn't recommend it versus the competition right now. I would say get something else instead, uh, like the Zephyrus G14 2023 or 2024 version would be a better bang for your buck because it goes to higher power limits and just has more features. At what price point do I say this becomes a great buy? Probably around the 1500 to 1400 range, probably 15, maybe 1600. I don't know, somewhere in that range for a 4070 this low powered. The Honestly, the 4060 version might be a, a lot better bang for your buck because the power limit being lower means that you're not gonna get that much less performance with the 4060 compared to the 4070 because the 4070 and 4060, neither of them are gonna be maxing their power limit which just means that uh, the performance difference between those two is gonna be even smaller because the boost clock on a 4060 will just boost higher and you have the same VRAM with a 4060 as a 4070. So in terms of the config I'd recommend, I'd probably recommend saving money, going for the 4060 version, 
It's probably not going to be that much slower, especially the time spy score will only be a few hundred points lower probably. And you're going to save several hundred dollars. Uh, so get the 4060 version of this if you get it. And I would say get it when it's on sale. Don't pay full price for it, ideally. Uh, and maybe even wait for an even bigger sale before you buy this over the competitors out there on the market. Uh, just because it's it's got worse ports. I think the build quality is not quite as rigid. It's not per key RGB, especially since the power adapter is on the USB-C. It limits your potential uh, GPU TDP, which reduces your bang for the buck uh, on the laptop. No SD card. But if you're willing to tweak your game settings, it's still a very capable gaming laptop that can play mini games on ultra settings and have a good gaming experience. But the more demanding games will definitely need to go down to medium or low, where a full powered 4070 might even be able to play them on ultra. And that just kind of sucks. You know, the main advantage you get, the main trade off is that it's thinner, lighter, but that's where some of the competitors are just as thin and light and cost the same. And that's why I'm saying, go get, go get a Zephyrus G14 instead if you're gonna pay the full price. If this thing ends up being $400 cheaper than a G14, uh, probably worth the trade off, saving the money, going for the Omen 14 at that point. But, uh, but without, unless, you're, unless you're saving money, I don't think you should go for the Omen 14 right now. That's my review of the HP Omen 14. Thank you so much for tuning in. Just because I can't recommend the HP Omen 14 doesn't mean you can't get a great deal on a gaming laptop from Best Buy. I would encourage you to look at the links in the video description. I talked about them earlier in the live stream and went over all the other top deals at Best Buy to check out what you think is actually uh, something that is maybe better bang for the buck, like the, the Zephyrus G14 with an RTX 4050 right now, only 899, 500 nits display. That's phenomenal value for your money. And it's not gonna be that much slower than this guy, which is kind of crazy. I mean, it's gonna be slower because it's a 4050 versus a 4070, but it's a 4050 with a higher power limit and a lower resolution, so it's gonna be easier to run some of the games. So I wouldn't be surprised if it actually competed quite well in terms of frame for frame performance in each of the game. Links in the description. We'll see you in the next live stream. Brandon, out. Huzzah.